Let's all stand. Let's go to God's Word this morning. In 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter and chapter 3. Turn there with me if you would. Man, God is so good. Say that with me. Ready? God is so good. He's, uh, he's wanting to move, I believe, on the earth, and He'll move through people who are willing to go with Him the way He has designed for it. So I want to talk to you today about more of the Engage series. And um, I want you to turn to 2 Peter chapter 3. We're going to read verse 9. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise. He's not slack. That means that you can take it to the bank. It's done. He's, he's going to accomplish what He promised, what He said He would do. And so the Lord is not slack concerning promise as some count slackness but is long-suffering toward us. That means He's going to give us every opportunity. He is long-suffering. He is like a father or a mother that loves their children and will absolutely do anything for them. I'm thankful for I had parents like that. I had champion parents, grand champion parents, who were very long-suffering, and I'm thankful for that. So, But long-suffering toward us and not willing that any should perish. Remember, that's the heart of God. Come on, elbow the person next to you and say, remember that. (laughs) Remember that. The heart of God is that no one perish. No one dies. That's His heart. And that's the King of the kingdom that we serve in. Amen? That's the King over the kingdom that we... He wants no one to perish. None. And then He goes on, but that all should come to repentance. That all come to repentance. Let's pray. Lord, we are so grateful today. I'm so humbled every Sunday to get to stand before this wonderful church and preach your message and your gospel. Lord, I'm so thankful for a church that is not only willing to hear, but willing to do. That they take their faith and they go to work. I thank you, Lord, that that they served so diligently on Friday night. But Lord, that's just scratching the surface of what is in the heart of these people. So Father, I pray that this message will just encourage them and equip them even more to do what we are called to do as the people of God. Now we ask you for this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. I'm going to read to pretty close to the end of the chapter and kind of digest it, help you digest it just a little bit. So as we begin, Peter, who is an apostle and a disciple of Christ, he says that of the heart of Jesus, he says, the Lord is not slack. He's not slack concerning what his promises are. And then he goes on and he says, but his promises are true, and, and, and you, you can understand he will not be busy, too busy when you need him. He says he's not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. That means that there's something coming that we need to repent for so we're not here, to be here, and that we are out of here to be where he is, that after this life is over, we're with him. Reading on in verse 10, he says, but the day of the Lord will come. It will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Now, if you remember from two weeks ago and even last week, we talked about what might be happening on the face of the earth. It'll be like in the days of Lot and in the days of Noah. The days of Lot meaning that Lot lived in Sodom. And the Bible says that because of the filthy conduct of mankind in Sodom, Filthy conduct of wickedness, sexuality, that, that, sexual choices that were being made that were just absolutely against the heart of God. And he delivered Lot, righteous Lot, and destroyed Sodom. As you know, in the days of Noah, the, the, there was only eight people that were saved and, and born again, so to speak. That God says, these, are, these people are righteous, my righteous people. And he put them in an ark and he saved them. And he released them back on the face of the earth. But man was sinful. Man was always sinful, dating clear back to the Garden of Eden. And so God says, you know what? I'll not be slack concerning my promise. You needed you need a salvation all the way from the garden to the cross. And from the cross to the grave, to the grave, to the sky, where Jesus returned to the right hand of the Father. And then forevermore, we'll need him dwelling in our hearts as mankind And we'll need to be preaching that salvation message to the world. Because the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and heat will burn up this earth. Water covered it the first time. And after that, it'll be burned up with the heat that God 
sins as an element to heat the earth up. Verse 11, therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, ask yourself this question, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? What manner of person should you be as a child of God? He says, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and elements will melt with fervent heat. You see, the two words, looking for, and the one word, hastening, are are very key words. Looking for means that while you're serving, you're looking, and you're watching. That means you're watching for the signs of the times. I don't know if you're blind or what, but if you can't see that the times have changed, I'm certain that the kids and the young people that are living today that have been desensitized to all the things that we as the old folks see, and we say, oh, it wasn't that way when I was a kid growing up. These kids have never seen what we understand to be true and to be uh, freedom. They, They don't understand freedom like we understand freedom. The ability to put a 30-30 deer rifle in the back of your window of an open pickup and park it in the, in the school parking lot knowing you were going to shoot prairie dogs on the way home and no one took your gun and if they did, you know, knew who had it because they were borrowing it. Are you hearing me, church? I'm talking about freedoms that we need to understand that are being taken from us. But if those freedoms are gone, I promise you it starts because we in the church have allowed freedoms to happen that, that we believe that the devil takes And now it requires salvation in Jesus Christ to get things back in this nation and in this world. There there cannot be a move of bringing people to correctness without, listen to this, we cannot bring America back to correctness without Jesus. We tried that. Amen. It can't happen. Come on, give the Lord a hand. He's right. He's right. He's right. And so let's read on. Nevertheless, verse 13, we, according to his promise, look for the new heavens and the new earth in which righteousness dwells. You see, the word hastening comes up, and hastening means to do it quickly because time's running out. So we look for his return, and we hasten with the work that we have to do. We have to get back. we got to get our kids back to church, back to youth group, back to, to, the, to, the, to the children's church where they're learning the messages so that what they learn is freedom in Christ. That, that, has, that will change their life and change their heart. Reading on, he says to us that once the new earth and, the, and, and righteousness dwell, will dwell on the new earth, he comes back to us and he says, Therefore, beloved, looking for, forward to these things, You know, I I do look forward to the coming of Christ. But you know what? I still feel like it's the third quarter of the game and we got a lot of work to do. I I still feel like even though I'm looking for Him and I I want Him to come, I, I just can't believe a loving, merciful God would come when there is such, so many people away and the church is not doing its job. I, I believe that if the church is, we're all up doing our job. And everybody is, people are getting saved like never before, and we have a great harvest. Then I believe Jesus says, You know what? Everybody's heard. Everybody's had a chance. And so our job is to get out there and get the message to the world, the salvation message, which I will teach you today on how you can present it to the lost. Beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent, he says. Peter says, You've got to be diligent. He's the one that walked with Jesus. He's the one that got out of a boat and walked with him. He's the one who said we have to be diligent and to be found in him in peace without spot and blameless. What does that mean, pastor? I'm not without spot. I got sin in my life. That's right. But through Christ, God sees you cleansed. He sees you clean. So in Christ Jesus, that doesn't give you a license to sin, as Paul says in Galatians. You don't have a license to sin. He says, what bewitched you that you go back to your old stuff? You can't do that. But you know what that means? That if you do do some stuff of your past, you you have a plan to to give Christ back your life again and walk back with Him and say, Lord, forgive me. I need repentance. And so he says, without spot and blameless. Now verse 15 is powerful, so pay attention. And then he says, and that we are to consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is about salvation. Everything that God does 
since man sinned in the garden, in the garden where Adam and Eve took of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they knew good from evil. They only knew good before that. They only saw the goodness of God. Then once they knew that, sin crept into their heart and they could do evil. From that point on, because they are the first two human beings, all mankind comes from Adam and Eve. Yes, there's a bottleneck at Noah, but we all were, were, every cell you have is in your body is from Adam and Eve. And went, got you know, down to Noah and Mrs. Noah and the family. Amen? I don't know their last name, so I don't know. You know? Noah Ark Builder, I don't know. But we all go back to that. So with that said, all have sinned. We all have a, have a nature now to sin because our parents gave that to us. I gave certain genes. Julie donated some of that to our children. And, you know, Sam's tall and good looking like his father. And, <laughs> and the girls are moderately height and beautiful like their mother. Thank you, I got some amens on that one. <laughs> Bail me out, man. Help me out. And so, this morning, I want you to know that by what we stand for in this church has to be about getting people saved. We, we've grown by 150 people in one year and over 300 people in three years. Is that amazing? Why? Because our church believes in the mission of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We believe in that. And I would encourage you to continue to believe in that because people are getting saved because of you. And we will change the world if every church would go back to what's the most important thing in the gospel, and that is the precious blood of Jesus having been shed on the cross of Calvary that changes people's lives, gets them into that righteous position with God so that they will not be condemned to hell. And so what we say and what we believe is not powerful until we do what we said and what we believed. You can say it as much as you want to, but if you don't put action to it, it's just words. See, what we have done in society, and we have been conditioned, even by the church, is to attend church, not be the church. We've decided we're going to attend. And so we build big monstrosity churches to put people in there that are going to sit there. I say, bah humbug. Right. Can I say it this way? I call BS. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Because what we need to build over here that is laying on the ground is the bones, the dead bones of a living church that needs to be spoken into life that we can get more people in to train them, equip them, equipping the saints. And I promise you it's for that reason. That's the reason of this pastor in my heart is that we not build that building unto a man. Keep your plaque off of it, donated by. It's for the youth of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's for Jesus and His glory, because then we can get more people in it. I asked the engineers last week, I said, find a way to get over 500 people in there because it's too small. Find some parking spaces. Develop a, a Rolodex parking if you have to. <laughs> we'll Rolodex your car when it's after your service. We'll put, put it on there and roll it around. Amen. I don't know how we're going to pay for it. Is all I know is keep, just keep tithing. Because if God can take a few fish and small loaves of bread and, and he breaks that and feeds the multitude, I promise that your one dollar in tithe, every single penny you give will be given towards the building fund and he'll break it and he'll make it go further than ever, ever, ever before. And the Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is coming into the hands of the righteous. Why? Because God's going to make the devil what he stole from the church and from you, he's going to bring it back into the church and we're going to win lost souls for Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. Come on. It's going to happen. This is not a political speech. This is a message of Jesus Christ, and it's anointed, and I promise you, you're just as anointed as I am by Jesus Christ. So speak it up. Amen? Engage is all about salvation, just like Peter says. And our beloved Paul, he says, even Paul, in there in verse 15, even our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, he has written these same things about salvation to you. Hallelujah. And so when we feed hot dogs and hamburgers to the community and we put on an engaged shirt and it says on the back, reaching out to our community, to the people we love, to friends and family, we mean it. We mean it. 
And don't ever think that this pastor does not mean that we will reach northern Colorado for Jesus Christ. Through love, through relationships, one person at a time, because one person is important to God. You are important to God. So how do we do it? Here's some lessons. How do we look for and hasten the coming of the Lord? Number one, be familiar. Last week we talked about prayer and praying for yourself and praying to be ready. Now I'm going to give you the word on it. Have some familiar scriptures and have others ready to access. In other words, put something inside of you. If you don't put fuel in your tank, you're eventually... I, I remember in the 70s, you know, a friend of mine had a Toyota Corolla, and it was brand new. But there was this woman's voice in there. That when the gauge got down towards E, it says, almost empty. And her voice, you know, it wasn't deep like that. That would scare you. But it was like, <laughs> almost empty. Is that better? That makes you feel better. I'm glad to hear that. And so it, it, was, it was like, wow, that's weird. But you know, if you don't put fuel in, you should hear a voice inside of you. Almost out of the word. Don't you want to fill up? Don't you want to go to church? And the voice of the Holy Spirit begins to speak. Fill me up. My mom used to go to the gas station. Drove my dad crazy. She'd go in, you know, ding, ding. Remember those days when the ding, ding happened? Remember those days? You can trust your car to the man who wears the star. The big red Texaco star. Remember that? Ding, ding. Young people, you can remember that one. They used to check your oil for you. They used to look, can I look under the hood, ma'am? And you know what she'd say? No, everything's fine. Just give me $2. My dad would go, tell them to fill it up. No, $2, that's all I have time for, $2. Well, back then, that'd buy you about, what, eight gallons? Now $2 buys you eight-tenths of a gallon. <laughs> How times have changed. So be familiar. Share why we need salvation. Don't be afraid to share them why. Like, because you've been taught. All have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God. Why? Because from Adam and Eve, the mother and father of all humanity, when they sinned, we were drug into it with our genes. Genetically, we, we spiritually have sinned, and we all fall short of the glory of God. And remember that the wages of sin is death. That Because of that, death has entered into our lives. The clock started ticking on our life. That death would one day take over. The gift of God, though, is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And B, don't be afraid to share from your heart how God provided the means of salvation. Share from your heart how God provided to them the theology of the means that He sent God. For God so loved the world that He gave or sent His only begotten Son. In other words, God said, you know what? I'm going to have to put on flesh and go down there and dwell amongst them in order for them to believe me. I promise you the scripture we read today about Peter believed Him. He didn't at first. And he didn't want to follow him. Anybody else been there? Yeah? Didn't you bunch of liars? We all have fought God. We've fought God on what he wants to do with us. Give up today. Surrender your life today. And tell people why it is that God loves them. It's because he created them and he wants them back. Share from your heart how God provided that means. God demonstrates in Romans chapter 5. You recognize the Romans road. God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us. He came that we would no longer be in our sins. And in Ephesians chapter 2, you can turn there quickly if, with me if you want to. In Ephesians chapter 2, I was just looking at this between services, and it says in chapter 2 verse 1, And you He, he made alive who were once dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. You see, it's the course of the world. Listen, the, the course of the world is conformity. But the course of Christ is freedom. He frees you up not to be what the world says you have to be or what success looks like in the world. Now, hey, being successful is, is God's idea. He wants you to, everywhere you place your foot, He wants you to be successful. He wants you to have success in your life. 
He doesn't want you to be so bound by success that you lose sight of who He is as King of your life, as Savior of your heart. Amen? Don't lose sight of that salvation in Christ Jesus. See, help them see that everyone can receive this God-given salvation. It's, it's not just for a certain race called the Jewish people, the Israelites. It's not. That's who he brought Christ through. He had to have a lineage that he brought through that people would understand. He had to have the, and, and he chose why he chose them. That's up, you have to ask him that, but they're the chosen children of God. He chose them to bring the lineage through. If you go back and you look at the lineage of Jesus, do you know there's a prostitute in there? Can you believe that? <laughs> what? Yes. There's a prostitute. And, and so God takes all kinds of simple people and he puts them in the lineage of Jesus. Do you know that you're in the lineage of Jesus when you become a child of God? You're of the lineage. You're of, of, of the blood of Christ. You're an offspring, a son. He calls you sonship or daughtership, whichever gender you are. God will use you as part of that to spread the gospel. You see, we help them see that everyone can receive. And the way it is that it says all have sinned, so then all should be able to come. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now we ask for a show of hands at the end of every service. Is there anyone who would like to make Jesus the Lord of their life? Does it say in there, raise your hand at church and you're saved? No. There's something that has to change in the heart. And I truly believe that the life you live will be the message that you can share. The life that you live, how you live your life will be the message that, that God will say, now from there you can share it. That, that's not a message that you're not living good enough to share the gospel. No, I'm saying start where you are. Because I think that when someone first gets saved, that's a perfect... I mean, you talk about a gear shift going from zero to neutral into first gear and, and the turn of their life. Man, that's a message to someone who is around them. What is going on with you, Carlson, they used to say? What's going on with you? Do, is all you do is church? Yeah, and all you do is the bar. I know, because I was there with you. Amen? But when God changes you, and you, you allow Him to, and you invite Him to, it's a radical salvation, church. And when He gets a hold of you, and you allow Him, and you don't fight Him off and say, no, stop it. See, everybody wants God to get a hold of them. He's not in the get a hold of you business. He's in the church of Jesus Christ, getting Jesus preached into people where they say, I, in my heart, believe in you as my Savior, and that makes you saved because I believe and I speak. And then I was once lost, going down a road of lost, and I turned back and I said, I'm going this way. I'm going with Christ. That is a testimony. That point of turning is a testimony to the world. That he wants you to share. Changes your life. And out of it flows all the rivers and the issues that can be overcome in this world. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You can tell them, they can take that to the bank, that if they share their life and give it to Christ, that you will see them again after death. Amen. By faith and by works, this happens. Sitting in the pew is not going to get it done. You are an arrow. Arrows don't do their job sitting in the quiver. You've got to be willing to be put in the bow and pulled back and shot to where God would lead you and to guide you. I, I didn't ask for this job. I didn't want this job. I would rather be doing all kinds of things. Me and my family could be either in Idaho and retired, Southern California and retired, or New Mexico and retired. We could be in Savannah River. Nuclear stuff all over. I'd be retired with the pension of a nuclear worker. But I'm not breaking my arm to pat myself on the back. I'm telling you what God can do with a simple farm kid who didn't know what to do with these and didn't want to talk in front of people. If God can do that with me, he can have you share the gospel with your life and a friend. You and a friend can share the gospel in your workplace that is powerful. D, help them see the results of salvation are not difficult. 
The burden is on Christ. He gives you a yoke-destroying, a burden-breaking lifestyle that breaks the burden of the course of this world that says, conform. And if you don't conform to this, we got some labels for you. It's called hater. It's called non-compliance. It's called we'll shut you down and we will malign you. We will cancel you if you don't line up with what the conformity of the devil says to do. And I say, you know what? Break the dadgum mold. I will not conform. Listen, I like hanging with people that want to win. I don't know about you, but I want to win. And sometimes it takes a few building years to get a church to grow to where they want to win. We're there. I believe that with with the people that showed up on Friday night and and all these other events that we're doing, the Navajo Nation going to them, you know, they got the septic system in. They got... They got the floor poured. They got everything stubbed in. Concrete poured. Everything's ready to go. The the leach field, the the tank, everything. And they're on their way home right now. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. A couple months, we're heading off with another crew to to Guatemala. And after that, a few months later, we're heading with a crew to India where they'll preach Jesus with just a few superstitious little... The people there are superstitious, so we take some beads and what have you. And I remember there when, when I preached standing on the, on the steps of a Hindu temple, monkeys climbing all over it, and the people were like, you shouldn't be there. That's, that's holy ground. I stood right there in the devil's face and said, come on. I came here to preach Jesus. The men stood in the back by themselves because they won't mingle with the women. The wives are sitting over here, the children over here, and they're standing there with their skirt rolled up. They're going like this, looking at you like they're going to tear your head off. And then they wag their head like this. Nobody told me this means yes. <laughs> I was wishing I had my 45 with me that day. And, and then the arms crossed means I'm, I'm taking my hands and no distraction. I want to hear what you have to say. And turning sideways means I'm listening to you and no one will push me over. Isn't that a message? I wish we'd do that around here, you know. But then the wag their head... I thought, dear God, I'm going to run into this temple where they won't go. (laughs) But you know, that day, 700 people got saved. Hallelujah. 700 people. We were tying on bracelets and stuff like you wouldn't believe as fast as we possibly could, giving them the message of Jesus Christ. And I said, hey, has that temple ever done anything for you? How about that big bull out there that is full of concrete? Has it ever done anything for you? How about this? I'll tell you the God who has. The God who has. This is my testimony to them. This is the God that I learned on the farm was germinating the crops and the sugar beets and and the corn. And like for you out there, he's the same God from the heavens that's germinating and sending the rain for your rice patties. He's the God that's germinating them and and sending the, the, the sun to grow them and the rain to give them nourishment and the soil that he made for you to plant them in. And the water that, that satisfies their dryness. And, and that's the God that I'm talking about. Has he, has he done something for you? Yeah, he made your rice patties. You're all wealthy because of it. Has, it. has that thing ever done anything for you but cost you a bunch of time and effort building it? Did it do anything for you? Yeah, for, no, sir. How many of you want to receive Christ? Reach people where they are. Start there. And I don't care what you, where you've been in life. God has a place for you to go there and, and be a messenger to them. Listen to this. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You know, I think the hardest thing is spreading the gospel in the world Now, we've got momentum. Like a grandfather clock that sits there in someone's house and the pendulum is just sitting there is the normal church today. Oh, we we want to serve coffee and we want to do all these things to have programs in the church. Great. But you know what? It doesn't produce results. You know what produces results? is when we obey God's word and we take that pendulum and we say, 
I'm going to do something. Not on my watch will northern Colorado go to hell. If pastors, I'm with him. If the church and the deacons and the elder and everyone, if we're going to pray, I'm with you, pastor. Boom, and we start that pendulum. And once it starts swinging, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. If you quit and walk away and you're not in motion anymore, then you lost your motion, lotion, commotion. (laughs) Don't lose your lotion motion. Wait, that doesn't sound good. Don't lose your... (laughs) Just don't lose your motion. I'm about to wrap this up. Listen to this. Have it in your heart. You'll know how to share it. But stay involved. You know, listen to this. You know, you know the only reason we know about Silas, about Paul and Silas? It's because Barnabas quit. He left. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not bragging. I'm telling you, don't confuse confidence with pride. I, I coach with a man, coach peoples, who said to tell you all thank you for everything you did to serve. And, and that was, he said that was the victory because he's a Christian man, too. He said, tell you all thank you. But listen, I want to be a part of something winning. And take something from nothing and make it win is what we're doing with Jesus Christ. And you know what? I'm going to stay in motion till the day I die. And I hope you'll get in motion. Find a way to get in motion. Find a way to learn everything you can learn, sister. To have somebody pray like you prayed on Saturday, you can pray for me. You can pray for me. Where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. But it has to be about salvation. Don't get off of salvation. We will win the world back. One salvation at a time. Then the programs thereafter can happen. The small groups. The gatherings. The encouragement. All that can happen. But if it's not first in your church about Jesus Christ, we're off the beat and path. Amen. Amen. Come on, man. We all come from all kinds of backgrounds. We have to overcome this thing. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor, de- nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God. You see, there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands, millions of people out there that are on anxiety disorder drugs. And you know what? If that's you, stay on them until Jesus heals you. And the the doctor says, you know what? You don't need that anymore. Because then there's a testimony. The doctor says, I don't know what you've been doing, but you can get off of that stuff. You don't need it anymore. If you feel like God told you to stop doing something, then stop doing it. But you know what? Do it safely. I'm not telling anybody to quit their medication. I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you trust God. And eventually the doctor will say, you know what? Your blood results are just looking so good. You don't need that anymore. And you'll be like, "Mm mm-hmm. Don't you go, "Mm mm-hmm. You go, "Mm mm-hmm. It's because I serve Jesus Christ. (laughs) If you go, "Mm mm-hmm, and pay your bill and walk out, I'm going to slap you. The devil... The spirit of slap will come on me. (laughs) And I will slap you on the forehead. Angels will come and tell me. They were right there and they didn't say anything. Boom. Boom. So we'll stay on the team. We're going to go forward. We're going to reach northern Colorado for Jesus Christ. And maybe, just maybe, he'll say, you know what? You need to plant a church in Fort Collins. You need to plant a church. Boy, wouldn't that tick off them liberals. Sorry. <laughs> I've just had a belly full, and I'm just calling, calling it out what it is. Amen? It's killing us. Lastly, the word and your testimony. The word and your testimony are powerful. Through conversation, tell how you became a Christian. This is the second point. Now you've learned the doctrine. You've got all the scriptures of the Romans road. Now, tell them how. How did you become a Christian? How did you receive? How did, you, how did it change your life? And next uh, is through conversation. Tell them why you became a Christian. Why did you become a Hey, listen, people get online all the time to look for reviews of a product. 
I don't know about you, but my, sec- my previous secretary, she said, hey, I'm looking at this for, for our church, blah, blah, blah. And here's what the re- reviews say about it. People want to know the review. Tell them, if you can't tell them the doctrine, tell them why you came and how you came to the knowledge of Jesus and why you have remained. The last one is this. Through conversation, tell what has changed your life since becoming a Christian. It's more than just cutting your hair and changing your underwear. Amen? It is about something. Come on now. Sometimes i got to make you laugh. It's about changing your heart. If you just change the outward appearance and don't speak of the change on the inward, then what's really happening? You'll become a pew sitter and not a doer of the word. Be a doer of the word. As, as I close this and, and say to you, this last point, this last slide is, is so important that you understand that this message is all about salvation and the momentum that God has given this church. Come on, it has taken 28 years. I will not, I will not allow the devil to deny us of the victory that we, are, are, we will see when your friends and relatives come to Christ. That new building is not for the glory of man, it's for the glory of God. All we have to do is be obedient. Look at this. The most powerful thing we can do to influence others for Christ is to live a life of integrity and tell our story. Tell your story. How God delivered you. They, they want to hear it. So many people have have so much hurt in their life. They've been hurt by the church. They've been hurt by the the ancestors. They've been hurt by an aunt or an uncle. And all that stuff is real to them. And when they sit in my office and tell me those things, tears are coming down their face. They realize that. And so guess what? We're not just feeding people hot dogs and hamburgers. We're getting ready to launch a correctional institute for women, a correctional ministry that we're going into. Ladies, you can, you'll can you know more about it. If you feel called to help someone through correctional ministry and, and, and institutionalized that are going to be turned out loose, we, we want them to have Jesus in their life when they get turned out. Amen? And, and if you think, you know what, I need... I could be in freedom in Christ ministries. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to carry it to people who have addictions in life. Come on, there's, there's so much... There's a multi-billion dollar drug industry out there for disorders. There's a multi-million and billion dollars of pornography out there. The devil says, get into the course. Get into the the conformity of the course of this world. And Jesus says, I'm going to break you free from that that pain and that hurt. You don't need to go to your addiction to get your, your pain covered any longer. Today, it's the day of sacrifice. David said, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day. If you know somebody right now that you could think of right now as I close this sermon, if, if there is anybody you know of right now that you could say, I need to reach them. They keep coming up in my heart. Then join me. Because I've got a cousin or two and I'm going to become more vocal with. They sat in the same church as me as a young boy, as a youth group. Their father was my dad's brother. We all sat together in the church the longest. My grandfather laid the stones of the the church in Longmont. He hauled in a livery stable and set it on top of the stones, dredged out the basement with horses back in the 1900s, early 1900s. There's a lineage of anointing. My other grandfather was the pastor of that church saw supernatural miracles. Church, I believe God wants to continue to do that now. I believe He wants to do supernatural things. Can't do it just through me. He's got to do it through you too. And we'll reach a bunch of people for Jesus Christ. Let's bring them in and equip them. Let's keep getting people saved. Let's keep getting them saved. We, we've grown over by 150 people in one year and 303. Woo! Hallelujah! Take that, devil! Amen. Come on, let's all stand. Let's close. Glory to God. Would you bow your head? Well, absolutely. You know what? Keep your eyes open, head up. Everybody looking around. Everybody looking around. Raise your hand this morning. If you would say, come on, now get ready. On the count of three, you get ready. That the altar call will be, you know of somebody that needs Jesus. 
with your right hand and with your left hand say I could use some prayer for salvation myself if you got both hands up raise them up high if you got one hand up raise it up high come on look at the army devil take note I've heard these words and I'm sick of them but I'm going to say them in my church because I love it we coming with different results. We're going to overcome the enemy. We're going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the power of His blood. We're going to overcome the course of this world that's got a stranglehold on people that you know and love. Amen? So say this prayer out loud with me. Every eye open, every head up, everybody looking around. Say it out loud as bold as you can because we got the momentum to take it all the way home. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I join with you in a move that you're doing in my hometown in my community through my church we will overcome and we will reach our friends our family people we work with people in our community with the message of Jesus Christ I need you Lord to help me to help me overcome myself that I might, through you, reach my friends, my family, my co-workers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now those of you that are prayer work counselors, would you come forward so that we can have people ready to pray. Now if you said that prayer and you raise your right hand and you're ready to really reach somebody, but you just need a little bit of prayer to get pushed through, then you come forward. Come on, don't, don't look around. Don't be saying, I don't know if I ought to go. Get up front and get ready to be prayed for. And if you raise your other hand that you need prayer for salvation, then you get forward as well. We'll pray for you. Make your way to the front right now. Come on, begin to clap. Encourage people around you. Come on, have them come to the front. In the name of Jesus, here comes somebody. Hallelujah. Here they come. Praise God. Come on, encourage them. Come on, you can make it. Come on. Come do the work of the Lord. God bless you, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Go over here to Nevin, right there to Nevin. There you go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Let me pray over you and let's close this service. But if you need prayer, you come up afterwards. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we just pray that you would abundantly pour out upon this engaged campaign and that the people that are coming forward are needing you. They're, they're, They're reaching out to you, not only for themselves, but for someone else. We thank you for it, Lord. Give us the fire in our belly. Put it in our hearts and in our eyes. Give us the victories that we need, oh God. Help us to to go back to that person that rejected us in Christ. And may we reach them for you today, Lord. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.